I'd like to tell everybody a little something about soloing BAMs. Now, I will say that I've only played Slayer. I have no experience with playing the other classes, so do keep that in mind with what I say. Now, the quests that you get suggest that you bring a party of five, shown by the little icon with a five next to it. Five is, in fact, a full party, so you couldn't make a bigger party if you wanted to. But I believe that five is intended for essentially five random people that have no idea what they're doing. So really, you can throw any five people at one of these things to down one. Now, if you happen to have people that actually do know what they're doing, you shouldn't need five people. In fact, you can probably get away with just three. Add to that, if one of them happens to be either a tank or a healer, you can probably get away with just two. You see, if you have a tank, you have someone else that can take a beating and is keeping the thing's attention. The tank's generally pretty good at keeping themselves alive, and this allows the other character to do nothing but damage against this thing, which will end the fight fairly quickly. However, since you do not have a healer, both of you have to be careful, because every hit is a pseudo-permanent hit. That damage you take, you're going to have to live with for a very long time. On the other hand, if you have a healer, this changes a little bit because now you become the tank. Now, you're not nearly going to be as good a tank as an actual tank, so you still have to be careful not to get the absolute tar beat out of you. Because no matter how good that cleric is, if you just stand there and take it, you're still probably going to die. However, having a cleric does let you take a fair number of hits, so you don't have to worry about super precise dodging, and you've got an easy way to recover when you get hit. Now, when you remove that tanker healer and you're trying to solo these, things get exponentially more difficult. Now, you no longer have a tank, which means you are tanking. You will always have the opponent's attention, meaning you're not going to get in nearly as much damage as before. Add to that, you do not have a healer, which means not only do you have the opponent's attention constantly, but you also can't get hit, because you have very little way to recover, and on the off chance you do get hit, you're going to have to live with that damage for a reasonably long time. Of course, you can use potions if you want to, but that's a discussion for another time. So there we are, a very quick explanation of what exactly it is that I'm dealing with. Greetings once again, dear viewers. I'm back out here... greeting my old friend Abraxas. We've seen him before, and I'm taking a look at him once again. Not much has changed. Since last time, I've fought a few guys around here. I've got a little bit of rest. I've also learned a few things. Abraxas, this is no regular monster. This is no regular BAM that you fight in a quest. There is no quest. This is a world boss. Not your average BAM. Now, the first thing I do is run up and make a mistake. You can see by me spamming not enough MP, the first mistake that I make is by doing my 1 to 3 right at the start. With that 1 to 3 right at the start, I know through great experience that I will not have enough MP to do a dodge roll after that. And yet I ran right up to him and did my 1 to 3 anyway, because I'm smart. Now a lot of the trouble with fighting Abraxas is that it has probably twice as much HP as a regular BAM. On top of that, it gives you very little option to actually deal damage to him. And I mean real damage, not like run to the side and hit him once damage. That doesn't really count a huge amount. In fact, the problem is the inverse of the crab that I fought last time. 
where the crab was doing stuff so often that I was out of MP. Abraxas, on the other hand, almost never gives me a chance to do anything. And because of that, I've got all this MP and no chance to use it. This makes a fight that would normally be about twice as long as another fight, because it has about twice as much HP, take even longer, because I just can't hit it. Now a couple, there are however still a couple things that you can do to get some damage in. First of all, with its regular attack, it has two regular attacks. One of which you saw just a moment ago is when it just, it's a quick burst forward, a small distance. After it does that, you, that right there. After it does that, you can get in one attack before you need to start turning again. It has another attack where it actually hits the ground twice. That attack, you can get two attacks in. That attack right there. With two attacks in after that one, you are getting more damage in. I don't even care about MP against this guy, but I get more damage in doing that. It has a number of other attacks. It has this one. Whenever it puts its claws up like that, it's actually readying for a much larger attack. This here is mistake number two in the run, which somehow it worked out. I don't know how. I dashed at him, and I knew as soon as I got to him, I'm probably not gonna have enough time to get a an attack in before I have to turn. I shouldn't do this whirlwind, but I did it anyway. And then he was turning towards me, and I was staring at him, going, Oh, he's staring straight at me. I should probably dodge. But instead, I used my overhand strike. It was like two of the dumbest things I could... I could have done in this entire fight. And somehow it worked out. That attack right there is another attack. It'll cross his claws and then charge forward. This is one of few chances for you to get in some real damage. He pauses at the end of it, so be sure to run up, meet him halfway, and I can hit him with my 1 to 3 there. I mentioned he has a charge attack, and that's the one that I stun. Take note that I've learned since last time that after I do the backflip, I can do the overhand strike right back in to hit him again. I think it looks kind of cool, too. Not gonna lie, I think, I think it just looks kind of cool, too. But that right there is what made this run plausible. Much, much more so than previously. Before, I could have taken him, but it would have been a long, hard fight. Every time he did that charge attack, what it is, is it's an area attack around him. You'll eventually see it. The stun isn't 100% successful. But due to that, whenever he did it, I would have to dodge backwards to get away from him. When I'm a distance away, now I'm long range, I'm not doing damage, and I've got to worry about getting close range again and closing that gap, which is always a dangerous thing to do. That stun made this run so much easier. It, gets, it removes a troublesome attack. I don't have to worry about dodging it. And it keeps me close range. And it's some extra damage, which... As I've mentioned, against this boss, I need extra damage. You saw there was another one of his various attacks. The large, like, poison spew out. I want to say it's supposed to put an adverse effect on you, 
I'm not sure if I resisted it or what, because all it did to me there was damage, and I'm thankful for that. But you see, it has a huge range reaching out. You really want to get to the side of that attack whenever he does it. Even then, I still got hit. It's just kind of hard to dodge. Also of note is the area attack that he does that I stun. He will almost always follow that attack up with that poison breath. The fact that I stun him breaks him out of that as well, once again, making this run plausible. He will turn and walk sideways every now and then. As long as you're paying close attention to him and his tells, you should be able to tell when he's going to do it and get out of the way. Also of note was that spin but like most spams, he has an attack to hit dudes behind him, which was that spin that you saw. His spin is actually easier than most to get around. If I dodge through him, I'll probably get hit, but if I dodge away, he continues spinning to do a second attack. That second attack... <laughs> run over all my friends over here. That second attack, though gives me plenty of time to get in close range with him again. And the second one, as long as I dodge the first one, will just go over my head. It's not designed to hit me there. Now, I've finally, after nearly 10 minutes, gotten him down to 75% and into his jerk boss mode. This guy especially is someone that you really want to keep your distance from. He does a lot of moving around, he does a lot of walking around, and one of the most, of course, one of the most dangerous things in fighting him is getting away from his troll walk. Exactly like the previous spam, and this is where I discovered that it's even a thing that can happen, exactly like the previous spam, he will walk directly up to you without actually attacking. He'll stop right in front of you. Even in his jerk boss mode, he will do that. However, it's not 100% that he will. Sometimes he will just walk over you, and that can be a death sentence. Against his jerk boss mode especially, that's something that can really happen. And it's kinda crap. You can see there the stun did not work, there's the attack followed up by the Poison Breath. Now, that attack, that area attack, that's not just damage. That's essentially a death sentence if you get hit by it. It's a sleep attack. If you get hit by it, I'm not even sure if it does wear off. It takes a very long time to wear off if it does. Well, it's an MMO, I imagine you're not they're not gonna just keep you standing there forever. But it takes a very long time for that to wear off. If you get hit by it, you can pretty much guarantee he's going to turn to you and mess up your day. Now you'll notice against the crab that I fought last time, I didn't use any potions. It's not that I'm adverse to using potions, though I suppose somewhat I am. It's that I feel when I'm fighting these things, this is a test of skill. This is not a test of, let's see how many potions I can down. This is not a test of how many potions can I make or buy and I'll just down potions through the fight. For me, potions are not a method to get me to succeed. And as such, I manage to... I tend not even to use potions when I know I'm not going to win. The first couple times I fight a BAM, I'll just not use potions, even if I'm on death's door. Because I know I wouldn't win, it's all a learning experience for me. I'll die, and I'll just come back another time, knowing more. 
Now fighting this guy, that doesn't mean I'm completely adverse to using potions, period. But they are not a strategy. I save them for when I know what I'm doing, and I feel like I can win. And it's to cover for a stupid mistake that I feel like I shouldn't make. It's to cover for a stupid mistake that I may occasionally make, or if I get caught off guard, but when overall I know I can win. Now, I fought this guy once before, and I died to him. He smeared me up against that wall. It was... it was actually kind of hilarious. I actually mean that. Even at the time, I was laughing. I just... I was trying to run around him. I dodge... uh, dodge rolled, but I dodge rolled prematurely. He hadn't actually done the attack. So... He then turned to me to do the attack again, and now is when I needed to dodge roll, but I couldn't. I was low on HP, and I was stuck standing there with no way of getting away out of out of the way of his attack. And his attack was to turn sideways and walk. And there was about th a three foot space between me and the wall. And he just went <laughs> right up against it. But I did fight and lose to this guy once before, but I got past his jerk boss mode this time with a little trouble, actually. And in getting that far, in being this successful, I'll add that was the first time I have ever gotten past this thing's jerk boss mode. And I have fought this thing a lot. I learned a lot from fighting the crab before that actually made this possible. Otherwise, I would still be here probably fighting and dying to this guy over and over again. Or at the very least, if I did win, it would be a very hard win. But just in learning what I did from, lear from fighting him previously, I felt like I knew enough and I got past that jerk boss mode, and I felt like I had this win. And that's why I used that potion. I wanted to get myself back up to full HP, because I really didn't want him to do this. I really didn't want him to beat me now. I didn't want him to catch me off guard, do a little more damage than I'm expecting. Which is why I'm trying to stay full, but I also used a potion because this guy gives you very few options to actually attack. And attacking is how I get my HP back. Now that attack right there, when I did the 1 to 3, then I immediately had to dodge roll backwards. I've done that several times in this fight, and every single time I am butt-clenching as hard hard as can be, because that thing, like, I'm just sitting there going, please dodge roll in time, please dodge roll in time, oh crap, I actually got put to sleep there, I forgot. Thankfully, he did check all to take advantage of that, he hit me with one melee attack. You can see though, by that alone, I am hurting. I've still got this, I got thrown off a little bit there, but I'm re I've recovered, mentally recovered, I got this. Healing myself up, I see now I also, I thought I used a potion there. I hit the button, I swear I hit the button, but I'm not using the potion. I eventually realize and go like, well... Well, I don't know if I... I was paying so much attention to the fight that I hit the potion button and I just thought I was using the potion. So it was then that I looked down and said, Oh, the potion timer is up already? That seemed very quick. Okay, I'll use another potion because I'm still really low on life. That was surprising. Usually a potion heals me for more than that. But 
but some things are going better than others. But overall, the fight is actually going reasonably well. I messed up, but I'm working this out. Now, this world boss... Um, the world boss isn't always there. There is but one world boss in existence. You have to figure out where they spawn, and you have to get there when he happens to be up. There is one per channel, though, so if you get there and he's not there, change channels, and maybe he will be. When I got here, he wasn't there on any channel, except channel 1. And normally, I really don't like fighting on channel 1, but it was the only place this guy existed. And I have no idea how long I would have to wait for him to show up again. Probably a couple hours. World bosses are a tier above regular BAMs. Both in the damage that they do and in the damage that they can take. As I mentioned, he's got about twice as much HP and his patterns and attacks make him really kind of hard to deal with. Now, th I could not get this guy off my sorry butt. I walked him into that pillar over there, just kind of hoping he left me alone for a second. Got off me. And he did, surprisingly. It all worked out. Heck yeah. Still dealing with his jerk boss mode. This is once again where the my tab was actually coming in very handy here. Did the attack, letting me get in close range, and the battle continues. Fighting this guy originally, I fought him several times, and especially since I can't do a huge amount of damage to him, the fights lasted a very long time. It took about 15 minutes before he, I even got to his jerk boss mode. His first jerk boss mode. Usually I can beat a BAM in 15 minutes. And that wears on you. It really does. This is a long match, if you couldn't tell by the video length. This is a long fight. And by the end of this fight, my nerves were shot. Just keeping this up for this long was about all I had in me. But I fought him many, several times before. Between the 15 minutes to kill a fight him, and then the 15 minutes to rest up to get ready again, I could get in about two attempts an hour. I fought him all afternoon, until he eventually just despawned. This was, however, a while back. I am fighting this guy now during the Dancing with Bams live stream that I did. This is the second of two that I fought during that live stream. People showed up to help out as well. In fact, you can see them back there in the distance. They're back there cheering me on and helping me out. Some of them being very high level. And they're taking clearing out the other BAMs in the area to help me out, and thank them so much for that. For the most part, that is just a convenience, because normally what I would be doing is if this guy got too close to another BAM, I would simply have to back off and try to lure him into another area. And where I'm fighting him now, in this quarter of this giant circle around the fire pit in the center, is generally pretty open. <laughs> fighting him before, I've actually drug him back and forth between this quarter and the quarter that's behind me, currently. Depending on where the other bams move around to. It's a pain, but it's very doable. However, thanks to them, I don't have to worry about dragging him around and just backing off when he gets too close to another BAM. They're, they were really helpful and went over to take them down, so thank them for that. With that said, it's been 20 minutes 
of me fighting this thing, I'm actually running out of things to say. The guy's got his regular pattern, and... BAMs generally have... a regular attack and then spe more special attacks. And this guy is a lot more troublesome to fight because his regular attacks are harder to deal with. Yes, I've been playing for three hours. Thank you. I'm a little busy right now, Terra. Could you call back later? Thank you. But this guy's regular attacks are kind of buffed up to the point that they're not super simple to deal with. If I get hit by them, they hurt a lot. And they even move them around, so it's not as simple as turn and attack. However, though, as such, he does them more often. Oh, that was close. Completely missed the first attack. The second one, I don't even know if the second one hit him. I wasn't paying that much attention. Or I was paying attention, I just forgot. Was that guy looking for a group? Maybe. I'd have helped him out. Well, later. I'm busy. That still just looks neat. Oh! Yeah, that hurt a little bit. Still no effect, though. Maybe that just doesn't put an effect on you. I could have sworn that put an effect on you of some kind. Now here, I'm actually kind of road going back and forth in the other direction. There was the bam over there, so instead of continuously circling him like I usually do, I'm dancing back and or I was dancing back and forth. I would go left a rotation, right a rotation, left a rotation, right a rotation. Against this guy, it doesn't really matter a huge amount which direction you're rotating him in. But I would still suggest going counterclockwise. And I suggest that because of his attack that hits behind him, I want to say with the two spins, the second spin is much more likely to hit you if you are uh, on his other side, if you are uh, going clockwise instead. I suppose it helps that I'm... Wow, that actually hurt a little bit. That was like... That wasn't a huge amount. He walked over me, but it did about a thousand damage. I'm debating the usefulness of my five when I knock him down. I knock him down, and five is a... It's a jump in the air and stab the ground attack but it generally doesn't do a... It does more damage to downed enemies, which is why I use it. But in experience, it doesn't do as much damage as I feel like it should. Especially for as long as I have to wait to pull my sword up out of the ground and... I winded it. I knocked his sorry butt down and winded him. You guys... You guys have no idea. And again! You guys have no idea how good that made me feel. I have fought this guy for days. And that is the first time I've ever gotten him so low on HP that I winded him. And it is a glorious winding. I can run up and get a f easily get a full combo in and follow up with my three. That feels good beating on him there. It really does. 
Ah, and I've ticked him off again. One thing that I've noticed about this guy... I'm stuck inside him. I have no idea what's happening. I tried to use my rush. I got hit. Now I'm running slowly. Things are generally going not as well as I would like them to, but I managed to get away. I only lost a little bit of life. Still keeping my distance. My tab is up, so tab once again to get away from him. That didn't help as much as I'd like it to. Please don't run me over. Please use an attack. Thank you very much. Going to keep running. Nope, it's still on. I thought it wore off, but no, it's he's still red and angry. Actually, should I call it a he? I don't know the gender of the crab, but there's a little person riding the crab. In fact, the person riding the crab is the one that actually does the area attack that puts you to sleep. And that little person up top of the crab... Oh, that hurt a little. Thankfully, not only did he get winded, but the jerk boss mode wore off, so I had time to recover from that. Now, I've got very little MP here because I was running around for so long, and my MP degenerates when I'm walking around without my sword out. Thankfully, it was simple enough to build up some more MP, so all is still going well. But yeah, the person on top of this thing is a lady, actually. So maybe I should call this thing a she. I don't know. The lady is piloting it, so I guess, like, really I'm fighting her. Like, I don't know what this crab would be doing if she wasn't up there. It probably doesn't care. But one thing that I've noticed specifically with this fight is this guy was a little bit late in going into his jerk boss mode. It's usually done at right around 75, 15, 25 percent. But he got into it a little bit late. So like 75 percent was coming around and I'm going it should happen any time now, but I whittled away a good few more percent. Oh, I whittled away a good few more percent before it really kicked off, before it really happened. And that actually got me really worried come the end of the fight, because I thought everything's been going all right so far, but especially once this thing gets into jerk boss mode, anything can happen. I could lose in a heartbeat just by a misclick, a wrong click. Do the wrong attack at the wrong time. And that could end the fight in jerk boss mode. And I'm looking at this going, I'm past the 25% jerk boss mode, but most BAMs will go into that mode again just before they die. Which made me worry. Because usually they're low enough that once they go in, I can't just hit them once more and knock them down. I can't just be a little bit more risky but get an attack or two in and finish them off quickly. Usually, despite them being so low it's painful, I have to dance around them for five minutes but while I wait for it to wear off. And with this guy... Since his jerk boss mode was happening so late, I wasn't sure if I was actually going to kill him before that attack went off. And that really worried me a bit. I had no idea if this fight was in the bag or not. I had no idea if I could just keep hammering on him until I win. Or if I had one more completely random event to deal with. I can hope, but I don't know. It felt like I've got this fight in the bag. 11% as long as I've been fighting this thing, it would have killed me if I died to this thing. I would have walked right back out here and fought him again but it would have killed me emotionally to do that. 
and I wanted to have this fight. I wanted to have this win. But I didn't know if I had it yet. And every single time that thing walks towards me, I'm just standing there going, please don't walk over me, please don't walk over me, please don't walk over me. Now doing the 1 to 3 there in response to that attack is actually a little weird just because I see I'm mid-range now and I'm trying to get close range but it's never as easy as I would like it to be. Stun again, get back in range. But doing that attack there, that 1 to 3 back there, it's troublesome because I have to get close enough to hit him. But that attack usually puts him so far away that I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to hit him or not. I can hope, but... <laughs> and that's what a lot of this fight is. It may look like it's going really well, but every, st every step of the way, I'm just hoping. I'm praying nothing really crappy happens. Did the whirlwind again there? I was smart and didn't go into the overhand strike. I actually saw that he was doing the spinny attack thing and I figured, no, I'm not going to do that attack like an idiot. I'm actually going to get the crap away from him because I would really rather not get hit by that. Down to 4% here. Since he did the two attacks, I can actually get in two attacks of my own, stun him, stun him and overhand strike again. I wasn't sure what the crap he was doing there, I just got away from him, just whatever you're gonna do, I don't want any part of it. Now here, I did my one to three on him, and that guy spawned right there on top of me. I want to say right now, this is where... Those guys, my buddies over there who've been clearing these other BAMs out for me, they saved this run. And I can say that though I did, in fact, solo this Abraxas, it was a team fight. It was a team victory. Because this fight was mine, but without their help, I would not have won. Even at 1.7% now, the fact that I ticked off another BAM, that would have been the end of the run. Right there. That would have been it. At least I think so. I'm curious now. I'm genuinely wondering what would have happened. Could I have maybe danced around long enough and just poked at the Abraxas long enough to actually take him out? He's at 1.2% now. He's really low. And he apparently doesn't want me to win because he was doing a whole lot of walking around and generally making my life miserable. It's a good thing I didn't use Retaliate before, because I actually needed to use it there with him being that close. Is he at 0.1%? His Jerk Boss mode triggered. As I killed him. And that was the end... ...of the Abraxas fight. I've downed a world boss, and heaven help me, that was... That was terrible. I, I'm down to 33 stamina. Starting from a maximum of 120, I am down to 33 stamina. Stamina, by the way, determines what your maximum HP is. My maximum HP at 120% is like 12 to 1300 HP, if not more. Go back to the beginning of the video and check. 
Yeah, it's like 13, it's over 1300 HP. And right now my maximum HP is, I don't even know if it's the 10,000 there. Maybe it's that 10,000. So yeah, I have successfully downed a world boss. Until next time, everyone. I've got someone else that I gotta fight, and it doesn't look like it's gonna be pretty. <laughs>